Hey everybody, welcome to Camp ADHD. My name is Jamie, I'm here from ADHD Surprise and I am super excited for this event. Uh, what a cool idea, uh, just to bring ADHDers together, to have discussions, to have this whole day dedicated to uh, learning about and talking with other uh, ADHDers about ADHD, solving real problems together. This is incredible and I'm so delighted to have been invited uh, to uh, speak today. I'm also pretty nervous about it, but man, this is amazing and I could not could not turn it down. So today I'm going to talk to you about ADHD and masking. What is it? Why is it important to know about it? You know, what are some examples and you know, how do we recognize it in ourselves? What should we do about it? So um, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. So what is masking? When we talk about ADHD, uh, masking is when we actively hide our ADHD symptoms. This is typically through learned behaviors that we've picked up over time, which may or may not be healthy. Um, you know, so uh, that's, that's the bottom line. It's just behaviors that we've done that kind of hide our symptoms. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of jump right into uh, some examples. So examples of masking. Uh, first off, I have to give a shout out to uh, Pina, ADHD alien. Uh, she has done these amazing uh, comics around masking behaviors and uh, allowed me to use some of these in my presentation today. And so thank you, Pina. Um, and here we're going to go through a, a few of hers and then I have some of my own examples too. So here's her first example of masking. Um, where she was constantly late thanks to time blindness um, and now her masking behavior is she can't relax before appointments and she arrives way too early and uh, so that's you know one it's kind of like a way that you compensate for you know the behavior um, so instead of being constantly late you're constantly early and and stressing about the clock uh, next example from pina is I was always told I'm too loud and I interrupt people. Um, and so now the masking uh, is uh, trying to be quiet and not say anything out of place. So you're just like actively trying to hold that in. Um, and uh, instead of, you know, shouting out and being too loud and, and kind of rubbing people the wrong way. Uh, next one, uh, always in trouble for losing things. My goodness, how many of us lose things, right? And so what's the what's the masking behavior here? Is obsessively checking belongings every few minutes. You know, I can't tell you, you know, a lot of people ask about, well, phone, wallet, keys. That's a pretty, yeah, pretty common one, right? Is I, you get ready to leave the house and where's my phone? Where's my wallet? Where's my keys? And I can't find any of them. Um, when I was going to get diagnosed, that was one of the things that, you know, came up for me is I always know where they are. But why is that? It's because every single time I get up to go anywhere, I make sure they're all, you know, my phone is in my pocket, constantly checking to see if my phone is there. Um, my keys, I obsessively, like I have a little dish and I obsessively put them, like they go into that dish every single time. Um, and, and so I've got like these things uh, kind of put in place where it can make it look like I know, you know what's going on and I don't lose things. But if I didn't do these things, if I wasn't obsessive about it, then I would lose them. And so it was, it's, it was tough for one to parse out because of the masking. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, last example from Pina. Um, she's gotten into so much trouble because of losing important papers. <laughs> Been there, done that. Um, so now she obsessively organizes uh, her paperwork and creates systems for her systems. And, um, you know, it's just, again, one of those things. So you, you find out, oh, I, I get in trouble for this. So I'm going to do this thing to cover that and make sure that I'm not I'm not getting in trouble anymore. Uh, some other examples from my own life of masking, um, holding in my emotions at work, because again, if you, if you have huge emotions at work, you are going to be in trouble at work. 
Um, but you hold them in at work, and then when you get home, you can unleash those. You know, and unfortunately, like, it's just what happens because there's a huge consequence if you're at work and you get fired. Um, but if you come home and you're angry, you know, most, you know, your family, they take it. You know, that's, they do. Um, it's not fair to them, but it's still an example of it. You know, because I could just be unleashing at work all day, but instead I hold it up, I hold it in, and it's, you know, stress, it adds more stress. Um, next one, not being able to handle that stress or anxiety at work. Um, sometimes, you know, I can't, I can't hold it together. So I call in, I'll, I'll call in sick, I'll have all these extra sick days uh, throughout the year because I'm either avoiding something um, that's really stressful or I know there's something that, that's, you know, I, I, it's just built up so much that I can't, I can't physically take it. So on the surface, it's just, oh, you know, somebody's just out today. But if I had been at work, they would have seen somebody who couldn't handle what was going on. Um, next one, never, rem I could never remember, um, where I'm supposed to be, when, you know, schedules and things. So I rely completely on Google calendar. Um, I've had jobs where literally had a different job site every single day of the week. And, uh, so I put in the Google calendar right at the top. You're at this place, you're at this place, you're at this place every single day. And then even the hours in the day, um, obsessively like making sure that every, uh, everything for work is, is scheduled on my calendar so that I know exactly where to be when. And I, again, it's just kind of like checking that all the time. Um, and finally, straight up lying to cover symptoms because it can be really uncomfortable when you have something that you feel like is sticking out. It's like a sore spot and people can poke at it. People can make fun of it. And so uh, sometimes you just completely cover it, you know. Um, I was always the really good one at school uh, of my siblings, right? That was the perception. So when I started to run into troubles and, and have difficulties, I, I just covered it up. I, I literally covered it up and just lied about it and, and, and uh, did not let on how much I was struggling. Okay, and so that's another thing you can do to mask is literally to just, to just lie about what's going on. So why do we, why do we mask? Why do we mask our behaviors? Um, specifically looking at ADHD. And again, I was undiagnosed for 37 years. And so a lot of this stuff I didn't know was ADHD. I just, you know, figured it was character flaws or something else, but I knew that I was breaking some kind of rule. And what's, what we run into is we're living in a world built on neurotypical rules. And many of those rules are unspoken or hidden and you only find out about them when you get hurt by them, when you break it. And then you're either the subject of ridicule or shame. Um, and then you're taught to hide that part of yourself because you've, you've stuck out too far and they laughed at you, they pointed at you, they hurt you in some way. And so you cover it, you, you cover that part up um, because it, it's uncomfortable when that part is out there. Um, so that's, that's why we're looking for a way to shield ourselves against feeling further hurt. Uh, so what does this do? What does this do to us over time? Okay, so we're, we're masking these behaviors and masking can, um, again, it, it's meant to hide the behavior, but, but really, um, you know, if you look at, you look back at those comics from, from Pina, look at those and see like, what did the alien look like when she was masking her symptoms? You always saw the little the little bead of sweat from stress, right? Um, so you're kind of replacing this this outward stress, the social stress of whatever the symptom was causing you, and you're replacing it with an internalized version of that um, where you you've turned it on yourself, and it's not really a true solution. Uh, masking isn't because you're really just covering one kind of stress and replacing it with another and it's not sustainable over time. Um, the other impacts you can have is when you're going to get diagnosed, um, you know, people may not believe you. You know, when I first started talking to my family about my diagnosis, they were like, what? No way. You're crazy. Okay. I was in I'm inattentive type, right? So I don't have a, a lot of the outward symptoms of the hyperactive folks. Okay, and so when I started talking about all these struggles in school, they're like, you didn't struggle in school. 
I lied a lot about my struggles in school and I covered up a lot of my struggles in school. And that's what you can run into is when you're first talking about ADHD and to other people, to your family, to your friends, even when you start to bring it up to uh, psychiatrists and doctors trying to get that diagnosis, um, you have to be able to separate, uh, separate things out because um, everybody's seen this uh, kind of wall that you've put up. Um, whether intentional or not, it's there. And so, um, you know, they don't, they don't know what you've felt. They don't know the struggle that you've been through if you have masked things that well. Um, so you can have, you can get some pushback from family and friends when you, when you disclose your diagnosis. Um, and uh, that can be, uh, that can be really tricky to work through. Um, that kind of leads us to the next point uh, about like, why is it important to recognize when you're masking and where you've been masking? Um, and, and it's really about this idea of needing to separate fact from fiction regarding your symptoms. Um, sometimes you may not even realize what symptoms you've, you've had because you've been masking for so long. You may have been masking since you were a child. And that can be really challenging to uncover um, uncover what's true, uh, what's truly a symptom that you're experiencing and what maybe you've just covered um, and you never believed was a problem because you've got this mask in place. Um, and so when you're doing this introspective soul search type of thing, I just warn you, it's not always painless. Um, you know, as I was really uh, first diving into ADHD and, and like thinking through my past and my background, there were some times I discovered something out of myself, <laughs> out of the blue, right? I'm just, I've been pondering it, I've been thinking about it, and I'm at work uh, one day and I just had this realization, like this epiphany of like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this since I was 15 and... Uh, I was completely angry. I, I remember tossing everything off my desk and I just wanted to uh, break something <laughs> um, because it hurt so much to have one of those realizations about myself. And other ones were, were sad, um, you know, where I just wanted to break down in tears um, because I realized that this thing that I had been struggling with my whole life, but I didn't know it in myself because I believed the mask too. Um, so learning about learning the truth about yourself can be a really messy business. But it is important um, because when you're going in to talk to other people about having ADHD, um, you need to go in with that conviction of, of understanding yourself. And, and some of this you may need to go through with a therapist. Uh, my therapist has been very helpful at uh, helping me to kind of parse out what things um, are really truly uh, part of my symptoms and what things I have just kind of developed sometimes unhealthy coping mechanisms or masking uh, behaviors over. You know, another really good reason to um, recognize when you're masking is to identify those uh, masking behaviors that really are take, uh, adding m so much more stress to you um, then it's relieving. Um, those are ones that you really want to take care of right away because um, it's not healthy. And especially if you've been doing it long term, it's, you know, for your long term health, it's important to to uh, trade out some of these behaviors for healthy habits. Um, so not all masking is is as you know detrimental to you, but oftentimes it is. And so it, it, for your health, um, for seeking diagnosis for a lot of really good reasons, it's important to, to recognize when you're masking and when you're not. So that, in a nutshell, is what masking is, um, some examples of it, um, how it impacts us uh, as ADHDers, why we do it, and why it's important to recognize it. Okay, and so now uh, we are going to transition to some discussion questions um, and I just want to, again, thank you all for listening. It's been my pleasure to be here and I hope, uh, I'm super excited for the discussion and I will, uh, join you there shortly. So thanks so much and see you just in a moment. Yeah.